can do. So there is a lot of, um, I should explain, well, once we get out into this area. There is a fair bit of dialogue uh, going on in this game, uh, specifically in the safe houses and that. I'm not going to be going through all of it. I don't think, like, going through every single bit of, like, text in this game is going to be, A, particularly entertaining for a Let's Play, and B, I feel like, you know, I'd be kind of spilling too much about this game in a Let's Play. I don't really want to cover, like, uh, like as much as I'm going to be going through the story, going through people's backstories and that is a really interesting experience in this game, and, um... You know, I don't want to kind of compromise that for people who might want to get this game after, you know, seeing stuff about it. So, yeah, I'm not going to be going through a lot of that with the uh, characters and that, but there is a lot going on with that. Um, might have even improved in this version of the game, I don't really know, so. But, either way, let's go to our cafe and uh, see if we can get some information on our lead. Because God forbid we're kind of in a dead end right now. Sitting ducks. Sitting ducks waiting for someone to come a actually come at us to actually find out anything. The man behind the counter looks right past you at the dog following close behind. Dante, I will fetch his water dish and perhaps a coffee for our friend here. Paul, Paul Amsel sends his regards. When he hears Amsel's name, the Turk's voice lowers and his accent becomes less exaggerated. His eyes take on a numbing look. Ah, oh, very good. Please express to her, Hamsel, my appreciation of his patronage. If he needs any more catering jobs seen to in the future, I'm always happy to provide. Paul is always pleased to send send business your way, Her Birk Ghazi. He was hoping you could discuss some of the details of his Green Winters order with me. The coffee shop owner offers you a smile. Of course, of course. Her Hamsel is too kind. Birgazi turns his head and calls into the back room. Kami, come. A young woman bustles in from the back room. Her gum chewing is loud enough to hear over the noise of the coffee grinders. That's impressive. Birgazi spits something out in the rapid fire Turkish. As you wish, Uncle. I will see to it right away. Kami offers you a shy grin, snaps her gum, and hurries back in back into the room that she came from. My girl Kami is arranging to make contact with the chef as we speak. This will likely take some time. My chef is a busy man. While we wait, I wonder if you would be so kind as to run a small errand for me. A trifle, really. I hate to trouble you. I'm embarrassed to even ask, but I would be most appreciative of your help. Uh, of course, it is no trouble at all. Altog's voice lowers to nearly a whisper. The errand is simple. Hardly worth you. Worthy of you. Hardly worth you. Jesus. It's completely opposite and completely condescending. I'm sorry, does that say NURPS? Alright then. I have installed a number of data taps to Berlin's fiber optic network as part of my civic duty, you understand. Oh, as part of my civic duty, you understand. These taps provide free matrix access for all who live in the Kuzbasar. In order to maintain their... How do I say it? Their anonymity. Each tap's protocol buffer must be reset every few days. I simply wish for you to visit each data tap and reset it. Simple enough. Yes, yes, it is a simple job. Time consuming and a bit tedious perhaps, but simple. Just reset the taps and come back when you are finished. There should be three of them scattered around this neighborhood. The first one is just outside. Look for a metal box with yellow arrows painted atop it. By the time you return, I should have the information of information her Amsel requested. Alrighty then. Busy work, go. I'm going to need to change over my water soon. For those watching on YouTube and that, and probably for people who just uh, joined in on uh, Hitbox, it is incredibly hot here today. In fact, right now it is... Oh wow, it's actually dropped down to like sub-30 degrees Celsius, but it was incredibly hot today. So, I've got like fans going, I've got like two water bottles on the go in the freezer and that just to try and keep cool. Unfortunately, it's heading into summer here in Australia and that usually means like 40 plus degrees. Or around 40 degrees, it hasn't been 40 plus in a very long time. This isn't where we're trying to go. <laughs> that was dumb. 
Um, yeah, so now we just kind of wander around the place and uh, look around it. This is your magical um, magic store, so anything shamanistic and uh, mage-like in um, nature will be sold there. Uh, random street dancer, because why not? Um, pretty sure this guy you actually buy guns from, but we're not going to talk to him just yet. Oh, actually, I think he might have a thing for us to do. Oh, God. And we're having the same problem that I used to have in Returns, where, like, if you don't click on the person exactly, you kind of hit uh, behind them. I guess that's something to do with his, um, with the way this game does, like, clickable models and stuff like that, but, yeah. Tavern Backstyle Elf. You... You're here to conduct some business? If so, I welcome you to Metback. Metback, arms and ammunition. If not, keep keep right on walking. Uh, I have cash and I need weapons. Yeah, let's, let's have a look. Uh, nothing I can afford, or use for that matter. He does actually have a sniper rifle. Okay, so we can actually get sniper rifles really early on, so that's good. That's really good. Uh, is there anything I can sell off the bat? Not really. Uh, you looking for some magic, my friend? Oh yeah, that guy sells drugs. Old Zach's got the flash, yeah. Uh, the first time I went through there, I was like, magic? Oh, there's another person that sells magic. No drugs. And if you followed the uh, my Shadow and Returns Let's Play, you'll know that we shouldn't really trust junkies. Because the last time we did that, we got shot. We got shot the fuck up. As you approach the elf, you notice that he's in he's in mid conversation. His lips move rapidly, and his voice comes out in a low, quiet tone. The glossy plastic shell of a high-grade comlink glints on his wrist. I'm gonna try and listen in on this. Doing your best to look uninterested, you lean in slightly and strain your ears. You find that you can make out the doctor's end of the conversation. No. No, the price I'm quoting you is more than fair. Well below market value, in fact. If you can't pay it, that's your problem. Yes, I know that the, that the price has gone up. This is a seller's market. Well then, you just have to find the money or you just have to find the money or go without. I'm sorry, but I have to go. I have a patient. He presses a button on his comlink and looks up at you, a million dollar smile on his face. Sorry about the wait, my friend. Welcome to the triage cyber clinic. He extends his hand to you. I am Dr. Xavier Xavier Egg Ez Xavier. That's it. And your name is shakes his hand. Alexi, a pleasure. Pleased to meet you, Alexi. What can I do for you today? Let's have a look at your medical supplies, because I have a feeling I'm gonna need some. Yeah, this, like, this is really strange. The UI has actually been, like, uh, shrunk. Has actually shrunk from the last game. Like, this used to take up the whole screen, in, even in 1080p, which I am running at at the moment. But, like, all of this stuff is actually much smaller than last time. Like, it's actually kind of hard to make out the text in some places. I might need to change the my recording settings next time to uh, kind of accommodate for that. Because otherwise, that's going to be a bit of a problem, going forward at least. Uh, yeah, I don't think we really need anything from him yet. We're just going to complete this uh, little errand, and then we'll, before we get into next mission, we'll go through some of that stuff. See if we get, see if we get some money before that too. Because we've only got like a thousand, thousand two fifty, to work with, which is not much, unfortunately. Not much at all. Phone rings. Okay, it's an old obsolete phone booth. It's ringing. I guess I'm gonna pick it up. Monotone, pitch-adjusted voice begins speaking almost immediately. The oof. the shock Wellen writers. Shock Wellen writer. Yeah, I guess that's it. Contact for this Kai's is no more. Alexi is listed as a follow-up contact. This is our only secured line to this Kai's. Please listen to the following instructions carefully if you are a supporter of our cause. 
Okay. We have phone booths in strategic locations throughout the city. Within within each one, you may find a request posted for specific information. If you can obtain a copy of this information, return here and submit it via the port below the receiver. We will verify the authenticity of the information remotely and post an undocted copy of it onto the matrix ourselves. It is our stated goal for this information to remain free to all. However, you will be compensated for you will be compensated for sought after information returned to this location. The line goes silent. Uh, keep an eye out. The line remains silent. Fantastic. Alright. Let's close off this last receiver. As you are resetting the data tap, you notice that someone has duct taped a small homemade receiver to the system. An ear an earplug dangles from the receiver. Can you really just duct tape a thing to you know, whatever. I'm not going to worry about the the viability of duct taping something to a system and actually making it connect. I'm sure I'll just put myself into an into a into this kind of thing where I stop talking because I don't know how it could actually work. Uh, yeah, let's listen in on this. The sound of heavy machinery makes it difficult to hear the words that are being spoken. After a moment, you find you can make out two distinct voices a nasal woman who sounds like a heavy smoker, and a man who speaks in a high-pitched, breathy tone. Just heard Monica. Need to verify. Good for us. Continue listening, I guess. I sound like a conveyor belt starting adds to the noise of machinery. You can't make out anything else until it comes to a stop a minute later. Think our next step. Wait isn't ready to make a move yet. To be patient. See who steps up. Could be someone more... More conveyor belts start up. All you can hear is the sound of machinery. Oh, it's, it stopped before, so I guess we're just going to kind of uh, deal with it. See if we can march on... or See if we can bear it for a while to actually listen to something. Some sort of motorized vehicle starts up, draining out everything else. The bell rings loudly again and again. It sounds like a telephone. You hear the sound of a sudden door slamming shut, and the noise of machinery is suddenly muffled. There's a rattle of plastic, and the ringing stops. I think they actually rewrote that part. Because that sounds different. The nasal woman's voice can be heard again in a sing-song tone. Guten Tag, how can I? How may I help you? Her tone changes, becomes more business-like. I heard. Yes, he knows. I told him it wasn't time to make a move yet. What do you think I am, an idiot? The council needs to meet again. I know, getting everyone in the same room is... challenging. Getting them to agree on a course of action is going to be even more challenging. From my perspective, the cruise bazaar was only stable because of her. If she really is... out of the way... well, we'll see, won't we? Yeah, I know, I know. What can I say? Things go slow in the flux, sometimes. You hear the sound of a door opening again, and the cacophony of machinery fills the line. You can't make out anything more. Well, someone seems to be incredibly happy that Monica's dead. Which is foreboding, to say the least. We did cover most of this map in that trip, though. That is kind of something really good about this um, quest, though. Because you basically move through the entire area, so then you just see everything. Like, I can't remember if this persists over, like... You do a mission, come back to this place, and you can still see everything, but, um... It's good that it at least gives you, like, a good view of the area. And if you're talking to everyone like I wasn't, you'll figure out, like, Oh, this guy sells guns, this guy sells armor, these guys do magic stuff. You get a feel for this place. The man behind the counter has the broad smile and open demeanor of a classic Tur Turkish street vendor. Welcome, honored Defendim. Welcome. How can... And how can Burek Ghazi serve you today? Would you like a cup of coffee, perhaps? I finish with your little trifle. Ah, very good. I assume you had no difficulties. Uh... Modified a bit. Someone was using it as a surveillance device. He laughs. Of course they were. I'd be surprised they weren't. This is Berlin, after all. In the flux, everyone spies. 
If you do not spy, how will you know who is in power and who will be in power next? If you stay here, Effendim, you must get used to it. Who enters the Turkish bath will sweat, as my uncle always says. Nevertheless, I shall have one of my people look into it. Wait, there's more. I listened in on the tap and heard something. It might be important. He eyes you closely, amused. Oh, -ho! tell me, oh listener at keyholes, what did you hear on this surveillance tap you found? Couldn't make out much. A nasal man and a high-pitched man. They seemed pleased Monica was out of the picture. Turk the Turk's face falls. News travels fast in Berlin. These two are known to me. Is there more? The woman got a call. She talked about a council meeting tonight to decide if they should make a move. Then she was drowned out by heavy machinery. He nods grimly. Most excellent. It is indeed fortuitous that you discovered this information, though it is not unexpected. I will have one of my people attend this council meeting and report back. I'm very interested in this, so let me know what happens. With that out of the way, let us return to our pressing business. He barks a stream of rapid-fire Turkish, and the gum-chewing young woman comes hurrying out to the counter. The menu for her Hamsel uncle. Cammy hands you a folded piece of paper. Inside is a memory stick. Please extend my consol consolations to him. The death of Fräulein Schaefer has, must have hit him hard. Birk Ghazi gives Cammy a small nod, and she hurries out of the room. When she is gone, he returns his attention to you. Please express my condolences as well. I only just heard the news. Monica was an important part of this community. He frowns. Few knew how important. The memory stick Cammy just handed to you, handed you, should contain all the information her Hamsel requires from our from our chef in the field. Should you require my services in the future, you know where to find me. Until then, good day. All right. So we got something out of that at the very least. Which is promising. Like, I don't know what kind of information is on this menu from this. <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny. The, um. All the, uh. What do you call it? Um. Like, all the chef and menu and, uh, trifle kind of stuff in that, but I absolutely adore it. Alexi. Amsel peers at you apprehensively. His eyes are bloodshot, his expression grim. Did you get the information about Green Winters? Yes, I spoke to Altag, he gave me this memory stick. Let's see what his agent has to say. Amsel snatches the memory stick from your hand and slots it into his computer terminal. He navigates a series of command line menus in a world of amp and a wall of amber text floods the screen. Amsel scans it, mouthing the words as his eyes flip back and forth. Burek Ghazi's agent tailed Green Winters to a hotel in a cesspool of a kais called Dra Drogenkip. The hotel is called Das Kessel House. It is a renovated factory nestled deep in the heart of Drogenkip. Drogenkip. It appears that Winters is holed up there. Recently, there was some contention between two gangs over the control of this neighborhood. Due to the gang violence, the agent refused to follow Winters inside of the hotel, but he confirms that he is still inside. Well, what are we waiting for? Iga slings her rifle over her shoulder with a single spare motion. Gear up, people. We have a hotel to raid. Gloria and Dietrich pause. Exchange looks with Paul. Just a moment, Iga. Ansel rises from his chair, drawing himself to full height. Even so, he has to crane his neck to look, in her, look her in the eye. You are an excellent soldier, and nobody questions your competence in the field. Your loyalty to this team is equally commendable. That said, we believe that Alexei is the right choice to lead the... What? I, what? <laughs> oh, sorry, not what, but what? Don't mistake this decision for a reprimand. Monica considered your contributions to the team to be invaluable. But we all know that she wasn't comfortable putting a soldier in charge. Iga speaks through clenched teeth. Her words are measured, but her expression is livid. This is unbelievable. We want to put the rookie in charge. Again. She shakes her head. 
Don't you people learn from your mistakes? Alexi is the reason we're still alive, Iger. Click, damn it. <laughs> he kept us together. He let us out of there in one piece. Making him your golden boy. She sounds tired, resigned, but above all, disappointed. This is more of your flux state idiocy at work, isn't it? Dietrich reaches out, puts his hand on her shoulder. It's what Monica believed in. Iger's voice tightens for a moment. Her control slips and her face contorts in grief. Yeah, and look where that got her. She straightens to her full height. Let me give you a piece of advice. In the field, only two things matter. The mission and survival. Everything else is a distraction. Your ridiculous politics have no place on a shadow run. What can I say? We're German. We have a history of strong political views. Not touching that with a ten-foot pole. Iger sighs. The tone of resignation returns to her voice. Screw it. Let's put an end to this. I've got the skill and experience to lead this team. Alexi, on the other hand, was appointed by Monica as a joke. If you'd rather he take the lead, I'll abide by that. But I want to he hear each of you say it. They already have. You just weren't listening. You stay out of this. She stabs an armored finger into your chest, hard. The moment she raises her hand to you, Dante's ears lay back and he lets out a low growl. Reflexively, she takes a half step back. I think we've heard what Dante has to say. As for my part, Alexi saved our lives back there. You may not believe it, but he did. The way I see it, it means I follow his lead a while longer. Lori's voice is uncharacteristically gentle. I trust in Monica's judgment. Therefore, I trust in Alexi's judgment. The discussion is finished, Iger. Amsel speaks softly, but his tone is firm. Alexi will take Monica's place as the leader of this team. Okay, we've got a lot of options here. Great, hey Igo, could you grab me a soy calf? Ooh, that is tempting. Uh, work, survive, get paid. I plan to keep us alive long enough to find a payday at the end of this tunnel. I'll do whatever it takes to keep this team and Monica's legacy alive. That includes taking your advice, Igo. Yeah. Iger gives you a small nod. That's big of you. She looks from Dietrich to Glory to Amsel, finally down at Dante. Then she sighs. I don't agree with this decision, but I will respect it. She nods again, more, decis more decisively this time. Alexi takes the lead then. Conversation closed. It's time to move on. We need to focus on chasing down Green Winters. Indeed. I transferred the information that we received from Altog to the computer terminal in the next room. It used to be Monica's personal workstation, Alexi. Now it is yours. Monica kept a variety of notes and dossiers on that machine. I would suggest reviewing her notes when you have the time. Ansel turns his attention away from you and back to his computer screen. Good hunting. I will eagerly await your return. I wouldn't suggest driving to Drogon Kip. The roads aren't safe. Taking the U-Bahn would be faster anyway. Yep. Iger nods the same, turns to check her equipment. The rest of the group disperses in turn. You now command a team of Shadowrunners. And this is where the game kind of kicks off in, um, in earnest. So, there's a couple... And this is where I want to kind of talk about the big difference between Shadowrun Returns and Dragonfall is that now, um, does this actually say anything important? Permanently incapacitated on the mission, they'll be automatically extracted. Yeah, okay, we, that's just kind of not, neither here nor there. But the biggest difference between Shadowrun Returns and Dragonfall, specifically something I pointed out in the Let's Play, was that this is a lot less linear. Like, it still has an overarching uh, campaign hook, um, as, you know, tabletop games usually do, and something that transfers very well into this. But there's a lot more choice of missions that you can do, a uh, few missions into this game. And, yeah, it's just... It's what I really m was disappointed by in Returns. Like, don't get me wrong, I really like that game, but... The fact that you just didn't have a lot of choice with what you were doing, you didn't really, uh, 
you didn't have a lot of um, you didn't have a lot of choices with missions. You weren't ever given any. You felt like you were in an, a small instance campaign rather than a bigger campaign, which is what I really wanted from like a game like this. Which thankfully Dragonfall does in spades. So that is the biggest change from this. We'll see that soon enough. Uh, it doesn't happen immediately, of course, but um, because we're on like one very tight lead, we only have one mission to choose from. Um, I don't think we need to do anything at this terminal here. Oh yeah, so there are a lot of videos in this um thing. I'm not actually going to read any of them because again, I'd probably get bogged down in a lot of dialogue and stuff like that. Uh, particularly this section gets very bogged down in dialogue, so I don't want to kind of uh bog it down even more now. But, um, yeah, so, wow, I completely forgot what I was going to say. Again, I'm still kind of new to a Let's Play thing, and I would have thought that, like, having streamed so much already, that I'd be kind of good at, like, following tangents and all that, but I just don't seem to be very good at it, which is not great. Um... But yeah, the first thing we need to do is actually buy stuff from here. But I can't actually talk to him first, because I need to talk to her. And, uh, we're in, for a, we're in for a ride. Something about the young elf behind the counter makes your breath catch in your chest. She's lovely to look at, but it's a strange kind of beauty. Her eyes are large and luminous and impossibly green. As she looks up at you, you can see that... You can see that her irises are flecked with iridescent gold. Hello, and welcome to Alanorn's. Alun Alanon? Alanon? I've been saying Alanon, so I'm going to keep going on with that. Perhaps I can help you with something? As she smiles up at you, her eyes... Her eyes fixed on yours. A curious feeling of weightlessness fills your chest. It feels as though you're floating in a warm, calm sea. A gentle current pulls you closer to absinthe. And the sensation is pleasant. As you drift, the golden specks in her eyes begin to move deeper into her eyes. If you have enough willpower, you can actually break this sequence, but the golden specks in the elf's eyes swift and swirl, slowly picking up speed. It's mesmerizing. All at once, the specks ex explode into light and color. Absence eyes now fill your field of vision, and it feels as if you're drowning in an alien sea. The patterns traced by the shimmering specks in her eyes are kaleidoscopic, enchanting, nearly impossible to turn away from lose yourself. You are lost. You are in... Your entire world has been reduced to a churning vortex of green and gold. Dimly, you become aware that something is happening. You feel your body being buffeted by unseen forces, and suddenly everything goes black. Slowly and painfully, you struggle your way back to consciousness. The shop's owner, Alernon, is peering down at you, an expression of concern on his face. Absinthe stands beside him, her expression one of embarrassment. Welcome back, friend. Alonon extends a hand to help you to your feet. Absinthe shifts slightly to allow you to stand. What? What was that? What happened? My fault, and my apologies. Sometimes when I daydream, I bring others along for the ride. It was... unintentional. Yes, but there was no harm done, correct? You'll be fine. No harm done. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to go stand in the corner for a while. Yeah, that was strange. Please excuse me. Absinthe keeps her eyes hidden from view. Please excuse me, I have work to do. I'm glad I won't get trapped in that again. Greetings, young elf. The elf's voice is smooth as silk, and rich as clotted cream. Something about him instantly puts you at ease. I am alone on Half Dream, the owner of this establishment. In my, sh in my shop, you will find only the finest in mag magical paraphernalia. Now tell me, how may I serve you? If you're selling, I'm buying. Okay. Outfits. What have we got? One willpower and charisma. Cool. Why do I get the feeling this is broken up a bit more than it was before? Hmm. Ah, uh, conjuring. What have we got that I need? Air barrier wouldn't be good. Wouldn't be bad actually. So I'll probably grab that. I could use this outfit as well. 
It's gonna, co gonna cost a lot, but um, fortunately we kind of need it. Oh, well, we are going to need it. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. So we're gonna change out of uh, the secure shaman clothing. So there's not a lot of gear variety in this game, it's just kind of standard stuff like, oh, this is a better form of this. Um, so there's not a lot of customization in that kind of way, uh, which is good, because otherwise I feel like this game would get way too complicated, if that was the case. What they still haven't done, though, is allowed you to uh, confirm a purchase and then move back into the store, because, like, if you're like me, I immediately want to sell something, but I couldn't before, I had to uh, enter back into this menu. That's all we're going to do for now. Mostly because we're now, um, poor. But, oh well. Um, I don't think we need... I don't think we need to get anything else before we move on. Um... Actually, what's my inventory like? Yeah, uh, that's actually really off-putting is that they've reduced the size of the... or they've made the um, UI size consistent throughout the resolutions, but they just didn't, like... Like, I'm pretty sure that text is, like, pretty much pixelated. Uh, it's not great. I hope this... I hope this is still viewable. Like, I'm gonna have to go through... Um... I'm going to have to go through the footage of this recording session afterward. And in fact, I might actually call it a bit early, just to make sure I don't record too much with possibly bad settings. Because again, I, I thought I had this figured out, but... Yeah. This is what happens when you go live with stuff. <laughs> you realize stuff happen. you realize stuff screws up in the middle of it, and you're like, oh, well, I guess that's going on YouTube now. <laughs> uh, so we have five karma to spend as well. Ooh, a lightning barrier. That's tempting, but it's not available to be sold yet. So I think I actually want to put a fair bit into ranged combat. So it's going to be two into ranged, and then one into rifle, because... Oh, then, then another two into rifle, because that's what we're going to be using with this character. I was going to say I'd just put one into it, because I didn't think I had enough karma. But again, I failed at, I, well, I failed at doing math in my head. Alright. Um, you know what? This is actually probably a good place to, um, stop here, because otherwise I'll be stopping in the middle of a mission, and that's no fun for stream or otherwise. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go have dinner now. Uh, for those on Hitbox, I'm gonna be back a bit later on with, uh, maybe Heroes or something like that. We'll see where the night takes us. Uh, and for those on YouTube, uh, probably be a day or two until this next part comes up. I'm still trying to figure out a good uh, schedule for releasing these episodes and that. Um, I had been doing a thing for a while where it was video highlight, video highlight, but I'm running out of highlights now because I had a bunch stacked up and I haven't really found uh, a bunch more highlights to put up. So, kind of see how the scheduling for YouTube goes. Uh, of course, if you want to see this stuff uh, streamed live, I am on hitbox.tv slash Warfy. I've got Twitter as well. And for those on Hitbox, you know, I upload a lot of this stuff to YouTube, uh, particularly my Let's Plays and some highlights here and there. So definitely go check out that. That's in the description below this um, stream, and it's at uh, youtube.com slash gaming with Warfy. Uh, spelled W A R F E Y. So, thank you guys all for watching, thank you for watching if you're watching on YouTube or in the archives, and I shall see you next time.